Yeah, bang bang rail. Um, since um, I was really bashed up by the, by that black guy, uh, this time he, he done all my gums, slit all my gums, uh, fractured my jaw, um, knocked all my teeth out. I don't know. And I really ain't got about all that, you know what I mean? But it was a, it was a good, good good fight, but a good hiding to me. I, I took a good hiding, you know what I mean? And anyway, um, I'm down. I'm down the gym, uh, training. Uh, Jimmy Tibbetts walked in. He walked in with Joe Pyle, Alex Steen, and they asked me if I want to fight again. So I said, "Of course, I'm going to fight again." You know what I mean? I ain't stopped it. He said, "Well, you know, uh, what about the guy, the guy that beat you, the black guy? Do you fancy fighting him again?" I said, "Nah, not at the minute. You yeah? know, I'm not ready for it. Yeah, even though I've had a couple of fights and all that, I'm not ready for it." And I said, "Look, you know, this boxing game, especially the unlicensed fighting game in them days." It's usually, you know, you go down to the dressing rooms after the fight, you see guys, you have a fight next week or the week after that, yeah, with them, you know, it ain't one of the things, it's months and months and months away. But I said to, uh, I said to Joe Paul, look, I don't want this fight, not straight away, you know, it's going to take me at least three months to get in shape for this guy, yeah. I said, because this guy's smashed me a couple of times and next time I want to beat him. You know, he understands that his gloves were laced up and all this, that and the other, um, you know, and weighted up and I don't want to be the same. This time I'm going to give him what, he's, what he gave me. So Joe Paul said, let me get in contact uh, with his people, with the fighter and this, that and the other. It was Joe Paul's show, an 16 show, and Ray Bender also come up, Ronnie Bender's brother, yeah, who had got nicked with a craze. Uh, he comes up as well. So I'm talking and I'm saying, look, you know, I need for time, at least three months, to get into good shape. I mean, this time, I need to get in tip-top shape, best I've ever been, yeah? So she said, yeah, we'll give you time, you know? So anyway, got in touch with Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's going, look, we've got three months and a couple of days to put this fight. And do you want it? I said, yeah, definitely, I definitely want it, yeah? So I said, I'm really going to train you, Jim, for this, yeah? He said, yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to put you through it. Well, Jim lived in Hayes in Kent. I lived in Lewisham, there's quite a bit of distance between it, he, but Jimmy's got a car, he can drive. So what Jimmy's done to me, he said, look, in the mornings, I'm going to come and get you about 10 o'clock. He said, you're going to go for a nice run, right? And then later on in the afternoon or evening, we go down to Beckett. I went, yeah, I love some of that. He said, we, we would do this five days a week, yeah? I said, Jim, I'm up for it, mate. He said, on a sixth day, on a Saturday or Sunday, we're going to go for a nice long walk. You know, not me, you. You go for a nice long walk, six, seven mile walk, yeah? He said, okay, I'm going to come up for it, yeah? So I'm going down to Beckett, uh, he get picked me up, I'm going for long runs, kind of Blackheath, Dulwich, Woolwich, all around, them, all around there, all Bermondsey's running all the time, big boots, and I'm getting fit. I can feel myself getting fit. When you're fit, you're very strong, yeah? So I'm going down to Beckett and I'm sparring with, uh, with uh, what does he call it, Columbo, uh, Lloyd Waltham. And I find with other people, there's a few people go, da go down there as well, cut reach. So I'm sparring with all these people and getting, I'm getting good, you know. I'm doing two rounds of each person, three rounds of each person, as much as I can take. I'm taking some good, good bangs, yeah. But it's all coming back. Well, it's a train with the pros. It's all coming back to me, yeah. So I'm really getting really fit now, really strong, and I'm skipping really, really good. I'm skipping well. But I'm not too good on the pads, but I'm really good sparring and really good on the bag, yeah? Anyway, so Jimmy's going, look, um, we're going to start doing the, the last bit of running, uh, but I want you to start to put a pair of boots on, heavy boots, really heavy boots. So I've got a big pair of heavy boots, still toe caps boots, put about four pairs of socks on and running with them, yeah? Running on a black heath. And really putting some down, yeah, with Jim. Jimmy's driving. Jimmy's driving to a spot. And when I get there, I'll get in the car and come back, yeah. But anyway. So I'm now I'm getting really, really fit. Um, I phone, We phones up um, uh, Joe Pyle. Says, listen, when's the fight? He said, so and so, so and so date. So I've got another week. I've got a week of rest to take it nice and easy. No big madness. Just take it nice and easy. Um... On the day of the fight, I've been I've been to, to shows a bit to see people. Um, I've never seen this black guy again fighting, but I know he is fighting around them areas. 
So I said to uh, Jimmy, I said, look, you know, um, I'm, you know, I'm up for it. I'm really, I'm really up for Jim, big time. I really feel good, you know. I feel as if I can fight the world. So I'm powerful, yeah. But what I've also been doing, I've also been going down a weightlifting gym, and I've been wait, working out your weights. I've been working out your dumb, big heavy dumbbells, and I've been doing punches around, not punches up the air, punches around, yeah. Because I know when I get in the ring with this guy. I want to punch his ribs, right on his belly, gonna punch it. And I'm really gonna give it some grief, yeah? So I know that I've got to look after my head as well, so I'll be bobbing away and I'll be whacking him in the body. Last time, um, I didn't know that his gloves were weight weighted, and my, now my gloves are weighted as well, so he's gonna get what I was getting, you know? But I know the guy can bang anyway, but I know he can hurt me, and I know I can hurt him, yeah? Because he know I can bang. So the night of the fight, uh, I'm really prepared. My adrenaline is going like lunatic. It's pumping like mad. I'm, I'm nervous as anything. So we go under the car park. The first person I bump into is Ray Bender. Hello, Ray, right, mate? We're going to talk about his brother, bits and pieces, just talking. Go down his Alex Steen, Joe Pyle. It's everything sweet, yeah? And goes in there. Um, are you fit? I thought, yeah, I'm well fit. I'm well fit, I'm well, really fit, really powerful. I've been doing weights strong as ox, and I'm ready for it, really bad. Walk in there, I see, uh, also see Roy Shaw there, uh, which is nice to see Roy Shaw, he's just a compare boy. Uh, I see Joe Pyle there, or jo not Joe Pyle, I see, uh, what's his name, Johnny Binden there. I see got loads and loads of people, you know, so many people, Harry Awood, Billy Awood, they come down, and there was firms down there that don't really meet, don't really get on, yeah? And I'm going, walking walking around to where we're going to get changed. And I couldn't believe what I bumped into, mate. I bumped into my mate, Alan Dixon. Yeah, mate, I ain't seen Alan Dixon for years. I was in Chelsea with Alan, and his brother George Dixon, as it took over from the craze years ago. And uh, he was a right, you know, proper guy, Alan Dixon. The best guy you could ever meet in prison, always singing, always happy, yeah? Nice, nice guy. He was there. Come on, Ray. He was well played. Give me a big cuddle. He said, get in there and kill this geezer, man. Get in there and kill him. Rip him to pieces, Ray. And I said, I'm going to, Al. I'm going to rip this guy to pieces like he's busting me up, mate. I said, I don't know if you've ever seen the fights before. And I said, but, you know, people have told you. He said, I've been told what they're like. I said, I've been told you took a couple of good ideas, isn't it? I said, yeah, I did. And, uh, and now it's my turn to get in there and give him a good idea, you know. So we're in there, and when I get into the dressing room, um, getting all ready, I'm getting all prepared for it, and all of a sudden Jim brings out his lead, his lead, very thin lead, that he's gonna put into my, my gloves, yeah? My uh, my bandages, you know? And I'm a bit worried about it cutting my hands, but I see, he said, no, you'll be all right. He put it in, bandaged up, and. Listen, being that it's an unlicensed fight, no one really looks at it, no one really cares. Doctors don't really care, they just like to get it all ripped down, yeah? So it's my turn, I'm on. So I've got this lead on my hands, yeah? But these are eight ounce gloves and it feels like they're 16 ounce gloves. Because I'm really, I mean, really, my bandage is on, on really well. But as I'm gripping my hands, I can feel the lead, I can feel it, yeah? And I feel as if it's cutting my, 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 my fingers, my knuckles, but who cares, just get in there and, and, and use it, yeah? So I'm going down there, everybody's clapping me. My mate, so uh, he's got a pub called the Red Lion, he, he's a sponsor, he buys me a dressing gown and everything, black and, black and red dressing gown. I'm ready for on game as anything, yeah? Getting the ring, it's not getting the ring, it's just a ring made up, barrels, uh, you know, um, Rope in barrels, tied up, knotted up that end, knotted up this end. It's a, it's a proper ring, yeah, but you can't obviously bounce on it. Hard floor, concrete floor. That's the only thing that ever worries me about the place. Get, you know, falling over, doing your knees, doing your head or your elbows, and this, that, and the other. I see him getting the ring. He looks fit, man. He looked big, he looked strong, and he looked so fit. You know, and I thought, Phew, this is, we're going to have a war again here, you know what I mean? And I know that his gloves, he's leaded up, yeah? He's weighted up, his gloves are ready for me, yeah? He's going to sort of smash me to pieces. But I'm so strong, I'm so fit, that 
this time is in, is in trouble. He's not going to have it out his own way. If I lose, I'm going to lose good. You know what I mean? I'm going to lose good. But if I win, I'm going to win good as well. I'm going to really give him some grief, yeah? First round comes out. Um, he's threw a couple of punches at me. I've slipped him. Uh, he's hit me on the shoulder. Um, and it, it hurts. He's, he's, he's a companion. Perhaps his weighted gloves and everything. He's bang. He can bang. But I know that he's weighted now. And I'm prepared for his punches, yeah? But it doesn't matter how much we're prepared. Sorry. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much prepared, prepared you are. You still get it. You know what I mean? When it hits someone hits you, you still get it. You know? Anyway, um, first round it was like evens, nothing's really too much, we're not throwing too many punches, we're just looking at each other. Um, in the corner, walk in the corner, we were sure what, what you did your way, you know what I mean, boy, get in there and bunk your vision with your little thing, doing big time, you know what I mean, being big time, you know, get, 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 and anyway, so I mean, all right, boy. But I don't think Roy's ever thought this guy, this guy can fight, man. I know, I think uh, uh, get Lenny and uh, Roy a, a, a good. A good idea, mate. He's good, he can really have it. Second round comes up, and I start throwing punches into the ribs. Yeah, and my and that, when I hitting him really hard, my hands, leddy, the lead is really giving my hands a bit of grief. Yeah, but I'm really whacking, whoop, and you can hear him, whoop, whoop, and I'm and I know that every time I hit him, I'm smashing his ribs, man, because he's with leddy as well. Wallop, wallop. You know, and he's hitting me. I'm trying to get out of the way as well, as well as find the punches. And he's hit me now and again. And he's hit me with a left hook, yeah. He's hit me with a left hook. And my jaw, man, I thought he's broke my jaw. It felt, it was felt like he broke my jaw. My jaw, like, 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 you know. And I thought, oh, he's, he's, he's fractured my jaw, you know. My teeth was all shattered again. I thought, oh, not again. Goes in the corner. I said to Jim, I think he's broke my jaw, Jim. I'm not quite sure, my teeth was shattered, mate, shattered my teeth. So he pulled the gum shield up, you know, and it was all bloody my gum shield, and he, and he got on my teeth, and he said, I think he's, I think he broke his jaw, mate. Your teeth were rattling, you know? And my jaw was, I thought, fucking hell, not again, yeah? So it goes out, it's, I've got to beat this guy, mate. I've got to beat this guy, and I goes out, and I'm bashing this guy around the ribs, and he's put his hands down, and I come back with this, Big, big, big right hand crash with his leather gloves, man. I swear, my leather, my hands, either. I swear, I must have cut my hands to pieces. Right, my hands were sore, and I hit this guy so hard, man. I swear to God, I hit him so hard that his jaw must have come out the side of his mouth. Yeah, I smashed him to pieces. And being it's an unlicensed fight, sometimes you get a bit carried away, you know. Out of the way, he hit the floor, and because this guy has really bashed me up many a time, you know, and I know his gloves are weighted and all that, and I've hit him so hard that he's on the floor. I want to get down the floor and bash him up, but I don't. I don't know. Yeah, wait, wait, the time's gonna come. Wait, he gets up, count of eight, gets up, shoot the thing. He walks over, he throws the left hand, as he throws the left hand, walk, bang, I've done him again. I've done him again, and I swear to God. This time, right on the right hand, mate, it, it just shattered him. He, he, he shook. The whole body shook like that, yeah? And he on the floor. And I thought, that's it. He ain't going to get up. But he got up. He got up to, so I thought it was 10. He got up at 9. And he, I, you know, he could see, and the bell went boom. And he got in the corner. And I went to Jimmy. Yeah, look, Jimmy, I'm going to really bash this guy up, mate. I'm going to bash him up. You know, I, I mean, I go. I, I mean, for what I he's done to me, and all that, I'm gonna bash him up. I don't think about fair fighting. I'm gonna bash him up. You know what I mean? I've got to do it, mate. He's, he's a liberty taker. They bashed me up a couple of times and really put me in hospital. Now it's my turn, yeah. So I went out. I knew this guy now. He's open to a right hand. I knew he's open to a right hand. I knew he's open to a left hook. So I feel like bang, come back with it, bang, done him. Crash, he's hit the floor, and this time, when he's hit the floor, I've gone on him, and I've battered him. I'm battering him, you know, and I couldn't do nothing else. I, I, I just couldn't help it, yeah? And they all jumped in the ring, people jumped in the ring, like Joe Pyle, Alex Steen, they jumped in, they was already there anyway, and they're trying to pull me off this guy, and I wouldn't really hurt him, yeah? Um, but they eventually pulled me off. We got Alan Dixon shouting out, leave him alone, 
go on, why you smash him? And Vic says, mad. <laughs> he's mad, you know what I mean? And, uh, I, you know, I just got up, you know, I got up really, um, I felt a bit of a coward, you know what I mean? Because of what I'd done, but he had hurt me, yeah, before. And he, and sort of like, I'm standing over him and he got up, yeah, and he shattered. You can see that his jaw, that I've done his jaw so bad, that it's over there, you know? It's over, it's over. I smashed his jaw, cracked his jaw, mate, and he's, I pushed his jaw over. So it's nearly coming out the side of his other side, yeah? Um, he's done my jaw again. You know, he's broke my jaw. He's done on my teeth on the top as well. I've got a plate on the top now, as it happens, because of that, you know. Um, I could have had them done, but I didn't. Um, what happens? It's a long story, I tell you, but another time what happened with my teeth and this, that, and the other bit. He, he, he paid a life out of me, mate. He, he battered me uh, twice, and the third time, um, you know, it was my turn. I got myself really strong, really fit for it. Um, I feel, I feel if I hadn't let it, my glove, my, my, my bandages and all that, let it up, the way Jim done it, his fin led, I feel that maybe I'd have lost the fight, you know, because he could, you know, he was banging me hard and he broke my feet, he fractured my jaw and all that again and my teeth and all that, you know, and I was smashed around the ribs, but I bashed him up, mate. I bashed him up really, really bad and uh, I won the fight, um, you know. And he, he, he had to get put in a stretcher and he had to be took to hospital. Uh, it seems to be one of the things that's happened in his unlicensed fighting, especially when it's unlicensed and it's out of the way. It's not in a big place, it's under a car park. People get really, really hurt and it wasn't going to be me this time. Even though I got her, even though I went to hospital and he's fractured my jaw and he's and he done all my teeth again, all my, all my teeth and that. Put, anyway. Um, when I got in there, um, I was in a bit of a bad way. I really couldn't talk too much because of my jaw. Uh, I also had to go to the hospital, and, you know, uh, to sort me out, injections and this, that and the other, and stay there while they fixed my jaws up and all that, all that crap. So I was there two or three days. Um, more so my hands, yeah? More so my hands was like, they couldn't believe the state of my hands. My hands were smashed to pieces. Uh, I'm going to show you something on my thumb now that's similar to the way my hands were. My hands were just smashed um, two pieces, you know. It was like just cuts, cut, cuts of death, yeah, with the lead. Um, but I won the fight. I won the fight. Uh, that was the hardest fight I've ever had. Um, this guy, um, even today, I don't know his name. I don't know his name. You know, I've been telling the story now for a whole week or two weeks. And I still don't know his name as such, yeah. You know, but uh, this guy was a proper, 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 proper hard man. He was a professional fighter. It goes without saying that he was a professional fighter. Um, it goes without saying that I feel that he could have beat most men on a circuit. You know, this guy, honestly, this guy was um, different, mate. Different, different kettle of fish. Different kettle of fish. Danny McAlinden, uh, he see him, and, and you know, you could see that he didn't want to know this guy. You can see this guy's a bit, bit over the top, mate. Anyway, bang bang, Ray. Please press the like button, and subscribe. Nice one.